профессор Сергей Зелик. Uh, you are welcome. Uh, and the title of your talk is Inertial Manifolds for Dissipative PDEs. Сергей, are you here? Сергей, please turn on your microphone. Ah, you are welcome. Okay. You have 50 minutes. Okay. Here. So just let me I try to share the screen. <laughs> can you see my screen? I can. Yes, yeah, fine. First of all, I would like to thank the organizers to the pleasure uh, for the pleasure to participate in this uh, interesting uh, conference. And uh, now I will start. And uh, as you can see from uh, the title, okay, one second. Okay, as you can see from uh, the title, I will speak about uh, inertial manifolds uh, for dissipative uh, PDEs. And uh, this is Professor nowadays a classical uh, topic in the theory of uh, infinite dimensional uh, dynamical systems. And uh, there are, I will try to give uh, some kind of a survey of uh, classical and recent results uh, in this area. And there will be also other talks on this uh, conference about inertial manifolds uh, and uh, after my talk, it will be the talk of uh, Anna Kastianka, and then uh, the talk of Mikhail Anikushin. And uh, tomorrow will be one more uh, talk, uh, I think in group B uh, by Alexander Romanov. And uh, you will hear uh, more details and more interesting results uh, in this direction. And uh, I would like to start with a formal uh, definition, what is uh, inertial manifold, and then I will explain uh, why it is important and what it actually gives us. So imagine that you have a Banach space uh, and uh, ST is a dynamical system in, a, in X. It means that you have uh, a semi-group acting on, on X, which is uh, sufficiently smooth which is important for us uh, in order to be able to uh, define invariant manifolds uh, in our space. And you may think that uh, this uh, uh, semigroup ST is uh, a solution semigroup for some uh, PD. For instance, uh, you may think that uh, you are given a Navier-Stokes equation in a bounded domain, for instance, in 2D case where as a solvability, unique solvability problem uh, for it is solved. And uh, then uh, X is uh, something like L2 space or L2 space of divergence free vector fields. Or you may think about uh, reaction diffusion system. And uh, usually X is some kind of functional space. For instance, L2 from Omega. And then, uh, a set M is an inertial manifold of uh, this semi-group uh, or this dynamical system. If M is a finite dimensional invariant, uh, usually a strictly invariant submanifold of X, uh, which is smooth enough, at least uh, Lipschitz continuous, but uh, again, usually you have C1 plus epsilon for some small Epsilon. And uh, this uh, manifold possesses uh, the so called exponential tracking property, which means that uh, for every trajectory u from t on your manifold, you can find uh, the trace trajectory which belongs to the manifold, such as that uh, the distance between them are exponentially decaying. 
and uh, this property is usually a corollary of normal hyperbolicity of this uh, inertial manifold. So also it is not uh, explicitly stated in the definitions. Uh, usually this inertial manifold is uh, normally hyperbolic uh, and stable in your uh, phase space. So uh, also the initial dynamic is infinite dimensional. You fell down uh, very rapidly to this uh, invariant, finite dimensional invariant manifold. Of course, if uh, such an object exists. And uh, the model uh, equation, model functional equation, which uh, we will uh, consider in this uh, talk uh, is the following one. I take H is an abstract Hilbert space and I consider abstract parabolic equation in this abstract semilinear parabolic equation in this space uh, DTU uh, plus uh, AU equals to F from U and uh, A is a self-adjoint uh, operator which is positive definite and inverse operator is compact and uh, this uh, mimics uh, the, the operator A mimics a minus Laplacian, say in bounded domain. Of course, if you want to have this property in infinite dimensional space, uh, uh, then uh, the operator must be unbounded. And uh, the nonlinearity is assumed to be globally Lipschitz in this space uh, with Lipschitz constant L. And uh, as we will see below, this uh, restriction that it is global ellipsis is not essential. And uh, up to some cutoff procedure, you may consider only local ellipsis nonlinearity. But uh, in order to have to be consistent with this definition, and in particular, in order to have strict invariance of uh, this manifold, uh, you need uh, global, global ellipsis uh, nonlinearity. So this is uh, some kind of uh, formal definition. And uh, now let me explain uh, why it is important and uh, what is behind this definition. And uh, the key idea of uh, this construction is uh, to reduce uh, the number of degrees of freedom. So you start from uh, infinite dimensional space, which is, as I told you, it's usually L2 from omega and end up uh, to finite dimensional uh, dynamical system on your inertial manifold. So you really get rid of this infinite, infinite dimensionality if inertial manifold exists and can write as a system of ODEs uh, on the manifold which captures all of the non-trivial dynamics. And uh, this uh, approach has been initially motivated uh, by the attempts to understand uh, the nature of uh, turbulence and to study Navier-Stokes uh, uh, problems. And even the name uh, inertial manifold, it's some kind of marketing trick uh, uh, related with uh, turbulence and uh, Navier-Stokes equations because in uh, the theory of turbulence, there is the so-called inertial scale. And according to Kolmogorov's theory, you can split uh, these uh, scales into a dissipative scale, where the energy only dissipates, and some inertial scale where all the non-trivial effects uh, actually happen. And the inertial uh, manifold by the ideally should uh, describe what's happened on this inertial scale and uh, justify the idea that uh, turbulence is finite dimensional phenomena. But uh, up to the moment, uh, there is uh, no results about existence and non-existence of such objects, uh, even for 2D Navier stocks. So this part of uh, the project is completely open. We can uh, do only uh, we can do existence of such manifolds only for some uh, 
regularized versions of uh, or truncated versions of Navier-Stokes equation, but uh, the Navier-Stokes by itself uh, is uh, an open problem, probably the main open problem in this area. So this marketing trick is still not realized. And uh, I also need to tell you that uh, very often uh, the base of this inertial manifold is taken as a spectral subspace of my operator A. Because the equation is semilinear, it's uh, natural to use uh, this uh, a spectral subspaces as the base of uh, our manifold. So according to the conditions which I pose on my operator A, you have uh, an autonomous base of uh, eigenvectors in the Hilbert space H, and I denote these eigenvectors by EK, and lambda K are the corresponding eigenvalues which are enumerated in a non-decreasing uh, order. And uh, then I can uh, define the spectral projectors uh, Pn and Qn, which uh, I gave here the explicit formulas for these projectors. And uh, roughly speaking, uh, it is just auto projectors uh, to the first uh, n eigenvalues, eigenvectors of our uh, operator A and Qn is a projector to the rest of uh, eigenvectors. And I denote by H plus and H min minus the span of this first N eigenvectors and uh, span of the rest of eigenvectors. Then uh, my space H is split on a orthogonal sum of uh, H plus and H minus, and I can split uh, my solution u from t also on uh, u plus from t and uh, u minus of t. And then my initial equation star, which is uh, just a semilinear parabolic equation, uh, can be written as a system, coupled system of two equations. One of them is the equation for u plus, and another one is the equation uh, for u minus. I just apply projectors Pn and Qn and get uh, this coupled system. And in order to construct uh, the manifold, uh, I, I need uh, some separation of uh, my variables to slow and fast. And U plus will be considered as a slow variables and U minus will be considered as a fast variables. And inertial manifold, in this situation is understood as a Lipschitz or smooth map from H plus to H minus. And this uh, uh, map, if it exists, uh, it's a slaves uh, as a fast variables to slow variables. So, and this is uh, related with the so-called inertial form of my equation. So if we assume that uh, such as inertial manifold exist, then on the manifold, we have the slaveness relation that U minus from T is expressed uh, as a function of uh, U plus of T. And uh, these uh, variables uh, can be treated U plus, which is U1 plus and UN plus is treated as uh, so-called order parameters in the terminology of uh, Ilya Prigozhin and uh, other variables are just slaved by them. So we may project our dynamics onto this inertial manifold. So we may write uh, as a, explicitly the equations for U plus components. So equations for all the parameters. And if you look at this first equation and uh, U plus is now slaved by u minus by function m. So I just put here instead of a u minus this function and the equation become decoupled. And uh, after that, I have a system of uh, ODEs <coughs> which uh, capture all uh, non-trivial uh, dynamics of our initial problem. 
And this is the main idea, uh, the idea of reduction of degrees of freedom, which uh, give us up to exponentially decaying transient behavior. Uh, it gives us a system of ODE, which captures the limit dynamics of uh, our system. And as I told, it's an ideal justification for the idea of uh, finite dimensional reduction, which tells us that in dissipative systems, uh, at least it's a heuristic idea that uh, in a dissipative systems, even if you start uh, from infinite dimensional uh, dynamics, uh, you end up with something finite dimensional. And uh, this uh, uh, reduction and the idea of inertial manifolds and inertial forms give you a rigorous uh, justification what uh, does it mean. And now I also mention again that uh, the condition that F is global ellipses is actually not a restriction because uh, the general way how we study our initial PDE. First of all, we prove uh, well posedness. So it means that we need to check that equation is uh, uh, to find uh, some uh, phase space where the problem is well posed. Then you can uh, define this uh, semi group, uh, solution semi group. After that, you prove dissipativity which tells you that if you start with very high energy, after some uh, finite time, you, your energy will be, your solution will be in some uh, absorbent ball of uh, bounded energy. And after that, when you construct this uh, absorbent set or absorbent ball, and usually for parabolic equation, it consists of uh, smooth functions, this absorbent set, even if you start from L2. And then you do proper cutoff procedure and uh, cut the nonlinearity outside of this ball because nothing interesting happens outside of this ball. Everything uh, falls down uh, into this ball. And after this cutoff, uh, you will get a global ellipses nonlinearity. So it's not a, a restriction. And uh, in the general theory for inertial manifolds, so usually people from the very beginning assume something like this, that the function is a global ellipse. And, uh, and now we come to an, an interesting question because all uh, what I told you before uh, was uh, about uh, what kind of advantages we have if we construct uh, an inertial manifold. But the question is how to construct it. And for this, uh, uh, we need to separate uh, because uh, this inertial manifold is some kind of center manifold. If you use the terminology of global center manifold, if you use the terminology of dynamical systems, and uh, then uh, we need uh, some separation of uh, slow and fast variables. And in a classical theory, this separation is formulated either by the so-called spectral gap conditions or by the so-called invariant cone conditions. And I will uh, discuss uh, spectral gap conditions, which uh, much easier to formulate for this survey. And uh, the main theorem uh, here is the following one. If you have, uh, if you are given some N, such as uh, that the spectral gap condition like uh, which are opposed to, to two subsequent uh, value, eigenvalues of my operator A. And uh, this uh, conditions read like uh, lambda n plus one minus lambda n is greater than two constants of two Lipschitz constants of my nonlinearity. Then uh, there exists an yes, n-dimensional inertial manifold with this base as a spectral subspace and uh, this uh, manifold of dimension n exists and unique, and it is uh, uh, C1 plus epsilon uh, smooth uh, and normally hyperbolic uh, if f is more regular. 
and uh, I also need to mention that uh, uh, if this cutoff cutoff procedure is done, then you get uniqueness. Uh, but uh, this manifold is usually for center manifold theory. Before the cutoff project pr procedure, this manifold is not unique. It strongly depends on how you cut off the nonlinearity, and somehow uh, to find a clever cutoff uh, is one of the main problems uh, in the theory of inertial uh, manifolds. And I mentioned the pioneering paper of uh, Foyer, Cell, and Temam, uh, where this object has been uh, introduced uh, to the best of my knowledge uh, first time, uh, at least in uh, full generalities. Uh, of course, if you look at uh, center manifold uh, theory, yes? Yay. Okay. And if you look at the theory of uh, just the dynamical systems, the center manifolds for PDEs uh, they were constructed much earlier, but uh, all this terminology and all this uh, global, in this global setting, uh, this object has been introduced in uh, the paper of uh, Foer, Cell, and Tema. And uh, the constant here was not optimal in this uh, paper. After that, it was sharpened by Miklavcic, Romanov, uh, and uh, others. And the idea of the proof is used uh, uh, hyperbolic theory and uh, exponential dichotomies. And uh, basically, you start from the linear case when you put uh, f from uh, zero, f from u e equals to zero. Then you clearly have this inertial manifold H plus. Uh, and after that, you treat uh, this F from U as a perturbation. And uh, with somehow small uh, conditions of smallness of this F, and the smallness condition will be exactly this uh, spectral gap condition. And I will, uh, I would uh, mention my survey in uh, Proceedings of Royal Society of Edinburgh, where you may find, uh, 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 at least I believe uh, that uh, I gave a transparent proof of all this things there. So you, I would recommend uh, this uh, survey to interested uh, people. And uh, this uh, theorem can be generalized to the case when as a nonlinear function f its smoothness. Like uh, in Navier-Stokes equation, you have a natural term which contains a gradient of u. And in this situation, you can uh, uh, cut off okay, the nonlinearity to make it global ellipses, but you cannot uh, remove this eating of smoothness. So the map will uh, act from smoother Sobolev space uh, to less smoother Sobolev space. So I write it here that uh, if I take the norm of H minus S, then uh, the difference in H minus S is less or equal than constant L as the difference in norm H. And HS is as usual a scale of uh, Hilbert spaces generated by my operator A. And then uh, here I state as uh, a sharp uh, spectral gap condition for this case. And when S equal to zero, which is the case considered before, then you will have one here and one here, and then you will have just constant two here. But uh, this is a general situation which uh, can be used uh, for as uh, the operators which eat smoothness. And as I will uh, tell you a little uh, later that uh, these conditions are sharp in abstract, uh, for at least in abstract form. And uh, the main problem of the theory is that uh, these uh, spectral gap conditions are too restrictive. In particular, if you look at uh, the Laplacian, then uh, these conditions and use a uh, real formula for spectral, uh, for asymptotics of eigenvalues, you will see that uh, the spectral gap conditions automatically satisfied only in 1D case. And even in 2D case, it is an open problem. 
for instance, they satisfy it on a two-dimensional sphere or on a torus. Uh, but uh, in general, if you look, for instance, a disk, this uh, then uh, everything is uh, related with zeros of basal functions, and whether or not uh, these conditions are satisfied, it's one of famous uh, open problems in the theory of basal functions. There is a name at conjecture that there is no spectral gap conditions there, but uh, it is only numerically verified, and up to the moment there are no examples uh, uh, where they are not satisfied no proved examples in 2D, but uh, there are no results that they are genetically satisfied or something like this. So it's uh, an open problem from uh, a spectral scene. And in 3D, it's very easy to see that uh, they are not satisfied as a rule. So then uh, we come to a question, uh, what to do when uh, these uh, spectral gap conditions are not satisfied? And what happened in this situation, at least on the abstract level, then you have no matter where you try to make, to put this threshold, dividing uh, the variables to slow and fast, you always have intermediate variables, which couples the slow and fast variables uh, strong enough. And actually you are unable to separate uh, slow variables from fast variables. And this leads to the situations when uh, uh, inertial manifolds uh, do not exist in any, in, in any dimensions. So despite of uh, a finite dimensionality of global attractors, uh, you, have, uh, you cannot uh, write uh, uh, a Lipschitz uh, inertial form and you cannot build up any uh, manifold, any inertial manifold. And the examples of uh, such type, actually they were known uh, before uh, by, for instance, by Cell and Malé-Paré. They showed uh, that uh, the manifold may not exist. And uh, also uh, there are such examples have been constructed uh, in the papers of uh, Ramanov. Uh, uh, but uh, our paper with Eden and Kal Kalantarov, uh, from my point of view, again, is more convincing be because before the standard uh, counterexample is uh, based on the idea that uh, the manifold must have different dimensions in different points of uh, the phase space. And this, of course, is not compatible with the normal uh, definition of a manifold. But this is uh, compatible, for instance, with CW complexes. And if you look at simplest situations with global attractors, for instance, with global Lepunov functions, they are usually like CW complex. So it's this, these examples were not uh, so convincing that we really have infinite dimensional dynamics in such situation. But in our examples, we have shown some uh, phenomena which uh, cannot be observed in finite dimensional situation. For instance, we found uh, uh, super exponentially attractive uh, limit cycles inside of this uh, dynamics, some traveling waves uh, in Fourier spaces, in Fourier space uh, according with Fourier modes. So we really show that uh, it is, uh, can be infinite dimension. And then uh, the question arises that uh, the fractal dimension is probably not appropriate for counting degrees of freedom in the reduced equations. And this is also requires further investigation and it's an interesting problem uh, to understand uh, what, uh, how we should correct this and, how, and uh, what is really responsible for uh, finite dimensionality in this situation. And I also mentioned that uh, Lipschitz uh, inertial forms cannot exist in such situations, in such counterexamples, but Hölder inertial forms exist despite of all this uh, infinite dimensional phenomena. So probably uh, this uh, Hölder continuous reduction is something like uh, 
Piana curve, which is a, a nice mathematical tool, but uh, with somehow a restricted uh, practic practical value. But uh, this is also the question which requires further investigation. And I will go, as the rest of my talk will be devoted to some uh, particular cases or particular classes of equations where we may go further and uh, we may do better estimates and may construct uh, inertial manifolds despite the fact that uh, spectral gap conditions are violated. And there are several methods how we can do this. And one of them is the so-called spatial averaging, which has been developed in the paper of uh, Cell and Malé Paré. Uh, from the very beginning, uh, actually at the same year when uh, uh, the paper of Foyesh, Cell and Temmum has been published. And uh, this uh, machinery utilizes the fact that uh, F prime from U in our concrete examples uh, is usually a multiplication operator on a function. It's not a general uh, operator from uh, in a Hilbert space by this multiplication operator. And if you endow the problem with Dirichlet boundary conditions, you may utilize some tools from harmonic analysis and number theory and prove that uh, if you restrict uh, this F prime from U uh, to intermediate modes, and you properly choose what is this intermediate modes, then uh, this operator accurate to be close to its special average. And that's why uh, the most dangerous intermediate modes become not dangerous because the operator is uh, close to scalar operator. And for scalar operators, the technique still works uh, even if uh, spectral gap condition is violated. And uh, this uh, uh, idea has been uh, utilized uh, by Cell and Malé uh, to prove uh, that the natural manifold uh, exists for reaction class of scalar reaction diffusion equation in 3D and also in 2D. And in 2D, it can be arbitrary torus. In 3D, you should take a square torus. If you take torus with irrational axis, nothing is known about uh, existence or non-existence uh, of inertial manifolds. And this technique has been uh, extended uh, by Anna Kostyanka and me for kahn hillert equations, which is first order analog of uh, uh, reaction diffusion equations. And then uh, it was a, a already a cycle of papers about modified various modification of Navier-Stokes equations with uh, the same uh, ideas of special averaging. And it was uh, studied by uh, Kostyanka, Gal, uh, Gal uh, San, and uh, others. And I also would like to mention a more recent uh, result uh, of uh, Anna Kostyanka about a complex Ginzburg Landau equation. And this is interesting uh, because uh, a new method uh, has been uh, introduced there. And uh, from my point of view, this is a very pro promising method. And uh, this is the so called spatial, temp spatial temporal averaging, where because uh, if you do only spatial averaging, then uh, you need to have. Uh, scalar equation. Uh, this spatial averaging uh, fails to work with systems, but combining with uh, temporal averaging is still works. And in the next talk, uh, Anna will uh, describe this method in more details, so I will not uh, eat uh, her bread and uh, go to <coughs> another method, which is uh, the method of uh, changes of variables. And the idea of this method is uh, to reduce uh, the considered PDE to a new PDE where the spectral gap conditions will be uh, satisfied. Or 
uh, you may either do appropriate change of variables or invert it into a larger system as a subsystem in such a way that this larger system will satisfy spectral gap conditions. And this idea comes from uh, uh, the work of uh, Quark, uh, where he proved, uh, tried to prove uh, the existence of inertial manifold for 2D Navier stocks, but, uh, and he did exactly the transform of the equation in such a way that uh, the nonlinearity stop in the new system, the nonlinearity stops to its smoothness. And then uh, it, it looked like uh, you can use uh, the usual spectral gap conditions for global ellipsis maps, but the price to pay was uh, that uh, the operator A become not self-adjoint and contain Jordan cells. And actually it was a crucial mistake there because for such uh, operators, the spectral gap conditions are completely different. And so this uh, is impossible uh, to uh, cover this uh, mistake and all the method uh, becomes suspicious after that and people start to avoid uh, doing such things. And this is also, this was also some kind of mistake because uh, the method by itself uh, is uh, really very powerful. And uh, one of the application of this method is uh, to consider the so-called reaction diffusion advections, advection equations. It means that uh, here we have uh, one dimensional Laplacian but the nonlinearity F now depends non not only on U, but also on UX. And we can uh, consider the system of equations here, and we consider it on a finite interval. And uh, for instance, uh, the classical Burgers equation is in this list of such reaction diffusion advection equations. So such type of equations, for instance, models uh, some, are some simplified models of turbulence. It uh, has the structure like Navier-Stokes, but uh, of course, essentially simply, and there is a hope to understand uh, uh, completely what's happened with these equations. And uh, the problem here is again, that when you put uh, UX in the right-hand side, and then uh, the spectral gap conditions are also violated even in one dimensional case. So for small nonlinearities F, they still work, but if nonlinearity is large enough, uh, the spectral gap conditions are violated. So you cannot use uh, a general theory. And here the first uh, uh, surprise comes that uh, the answer whether or not uh, the inertial manifold exists strongly depends on the choice of uh, boundary conditions. And uh, in the case of Dirichlet or Neumann boundary conditions, we have proved uh, that inertial manifold in such situation always exists. Of course, when I say always, I assume that uh, dissipativity of this equation is proved or that uh, the nonlinearity is already cut off because you can easily construct examples with finite time blow up in this equation. So I assume that uh, this work with uh, proven dissipativity is already done. And if it is done, then uh, inertial manifold always exists. And if you consider periodic boundary conditions in a scalar case, the inertial manifolds again always exist. But if you consider the periodic vector case, which is somehow most natural from the point of view of uh, analogy with Navier-Stokes equations, then uh, we come to a non-intuitive answer that inertial manifolds may not exist. And we have uh, relatively simple ex explicit counterexamples for that with all these features like infinite dimensional dynamics and uh, super exponential uh, attracting limit cycles and so on. So it gives us uh, 
an answer that uh, probably the periodic boundary conditions are most complicated in this theory. And this is uh, completely opposite to the usual ideology, which is related with Navier-Stokes equations. People usually put uh, periodic boundary conditions in order to simplify the line and say us that uh, actually the choice uh, for fully developed turbulence, the choice of boundary conditions is not important. And this uh, simplest uh, uh, case of reaction advection diffusion equation tells us that it is uh, actually wrong. Type of boundary conditions are very important. If you are thinking about finite dimensional reduction and uh, uh, inertial manifolds. So this is uh, again uh, some kind of uh, interesting direction and many open problems are uh, related. In particular, it is interesting uh, to uh, study in more details this periodic vector case and understand uh, uh, some extra conditions under what uh, we will have uh, again, uh, the existence of inertial manifolds or to understand better these uh, examples with non-existence of uh, inertial manifolds. And it will be, if I'm not mistaken, it will be talk of Romanov about uh, this uh, uh, tomorrow. And so you will uh, see more details about such things as well. And uh, uh, to conclude uh, my talk, uh, I would like to discuss one more problem related with inertial manifolds, namely the smoothness of inertial manifolds. And as I already mentioned in uh, the very beginning, that spectral gap conditions gave us only C1 plus epsilon smoothness of the inertial manifold. For some epsilon, which is very small typically and depends on N. And uh, if you want to have, uh, for instance, CN plus epsilon smoothness, then we need a stronger spectral gap condition, which is written here. So lambda N plus one. And here I must uh, put uh, N plus epsilon multiplied over lambda N capital is greater than N plus one plus epsilon L. I believe that uh, these conditions are sharp, but we didn't uh, look at uh, counterexamples. But uh, the main problem with this uh, condition is that already for C2 smoothness, these conditions are not realistic in general because they require uh, exponentially large uh, spectral gaps. So you need lambda n plus one minus two lambda n is greater than something. And the way how you can guarantee the existence of such spectral gap, you need to put uh, lambda n is something like a in the power m, where a is greater than two. But uh, for all reasonable uh, elliptic uh, operators, like Laplacian, by Laplacian, and so on, the asymptotic formula gives us a polynomial growth of rate. So these conditions are satisfied only on the case when you study bifurcations. So when uh, uh, the constant L is very small and you, you, you can see the something like lambda N equals to zero, they are small and lambda N plus one is a non-zero part. So this is uh, just as a case of a classical uh, center manifold where everybody knows that they have a finite smoothness. But this finite smoothness is not only C2. But in general situation, as I told, you cannot uh, expect, uh, at least you could not expect uh, more than a C2 a smoothness. And uh, there are counter example of uh, George Sale, which shows that uh, even in the situation when the attractor is just one point and everything is exponentially uh, decayed to this point, you cannot construct a C2 inertial manifold for this situation. And uh, 
uh, our very recent work uh, uh, gives possible a solution of this problem. And this is related with smooth extensions of national manifolds. And this extension is uh, done by Whitney extension theory. And I just, uh, because I don't have much time, I just formulate the main uh, result and uh, uh, then uh, say several words. And this will be the end of my talk. And okay, you have, here, you, Sergey, you have my... five minutes. You have, you have a lot of time. OK, I have a lot of time. Thank you. Uh, so the idea of uh, this uh, work is to replace uh, one uh, uh, big spectral gap condition into a series of smaller spectral gap condition. And namely, I want to have uh, infinitely many uh, spectral gaps. And this condition is given by this uh, formula. So lim sup of lambda n plus one minus lambda n must be equal to inf infinity. So you have a sequence of larger and larger spectral gaps. But uh, I do not require that uh, the spectral gaps, any single of the spectral gaps uh, is not required to be exponentially large. And these conditions are usually satisfied if you have, uh, if the spectral gap, if you have one uh, spectral gap, you usually have infinitely many spectral gaps like this. So this is not a big restriction, not a big extra restriction in contrast to this condition, which almost never satisfied. And then I take my nonlinearity F, which is C infinity smooth. And I also assume that uh, uh, M1 is my first inertial manifold, which corresponds to the first spectral gap. So the, the first n where lambda n plus one minus lambda n is greater than two n. And then you have the whole tower of embedded, embedded inertial manifolds, which correspond to, to larger and larger n's. And the statement of the theorem will be the following. If you give me the number n, which is a smoothness, then uh, there exists a <coughs> CN smooth correction of my function F. I will denote this uh, Fn from U. And uh, this correction is, uh, out, is done outside of M1. So it means that on M1, the dynamics is exactly the same. And uh, this correction can be chosen in such a way that uh, the new corrected equation, DTU plus AU plus FN uh, from U, already possesses a CN smooth inertial manifold of larger dimension, of course. Uh, and this MN is, uh, contains M1 as a normally hyperbolic inertial, as a normally hyperbolic invariant manifold. So uh, this uh, theorem shows that uh, if you do correction, do cut off of your nonlinearity in a very clever way, you can uh, reduce, you, you can remove all obstacles to existence of uh, CN smooth uh, manifolds. And due to a proper cutoff function, you can uh, construct uh, uh, inertial manifold uh, for this new equation of any finite smoothness. And this is uh, a bit surprising that it is possible to do. And up to the moment, uh, the problem is uh, how big is the dimension will be of this uh, manifold. And uh, uh, up to the moment, there are terrible form, terrible estimates for this dimension, but uh, this result is uh, very uh, fresh. And we hope uh, that uh, these terrible estimates like double exponential will be reduced to something reasonable. But uh, and now we have a true smooth manifold and we may study the reduced dynamics on it. And we may use, uh, for instance, some numerical methods, uh, higher order numerical methods in order to compute uh, dynamics on inertial manifolds. So 
this uh, smoothness uh, uh, gain of smoothness is really important uh, to make uh, inertial manifolds uh, useful, for instance, in applications. And uh, I, I will not uh, state uh, especially the list of uh, open problems because they are stated in uh, my talk, inside of my talk. So this is uh, the end and thanks a lot uh, for your attention. Let us thank the speaker for a very nice talk. Questions, please. You are welcome, just, just tell something. I, I have a question. Uh, yes, please. Um, I understand the general idea that we have some infinite dimensional dynamical system generated by a partial differential equation. And we want to reduce the dynamics to a finite dimensional. So we have some uh, manifold and some dynamics on this manifold. And we, we want to find uh, these dynamics starting I from this infinite dimensional space, okay? Yes. My question is the following. Is any real example of application of such procedure that we are able to find first this, in a, this manifold, the second, the dynamics on this manifold, and this projection from infinite dimensional space, I mean the space of function, to this finite uh, dimensional manifold? Is some example? Uh, there are a lot of examples uh, like this when you study by, in bifurcation theory, uh, when you do center manifold reduction. And this inertial manifold is uh, some kind of center manifold reduction. Yes. For yes, instance, yes. But I, I'm looking for some example where the manifold is non trivial. I mean, uh, uh, say at least three, four dimensional. It, uh, for instance, if you have a higher dimensional bifurcation, you will have a less trivial uh, manifold. Uh, and you may explicitly write the equations uh, on this manifold. And just the uh, people in bifurcation theory always uh, doing something like this. Uh, for instance, uh, they, uh, they burn uh, Lorentz uh, equations and Lorentz attractors from 3-0 bifurcation. Mm -hmm. And you can do this uh, in PDEs as well. So, and uh, of course, uh, the problem will be here that uh, not uh, to write explicitly the equations, but if you uh, get uh, higher dimensional equations, it's not easy to say anything about the dynamics. So it's somehow in low dimensional cases, you can uh, investigate it and say something reasonable. In higher dimensional situation, uh, if, you're, if you're a national manifold in higher dimension, it's a difficult problem uh, to study further the dynamics. But we believe that it, this problem is somehow less difficult than to study infinite dimensional problem. So we do this reduction and then uh, you may go further with the standard methods of uh, classical theory of dynamical systems. And the reduction is rather explicit you can write form explicit formulas for inertial manifolds and uh, for the equations. Uh, and I wrote somewhere this equation. If you know inertial manifold, you can find uh, inertial form explicitly. You see this equation. And this function M is here. And uh, so the function M is a solution of some integral equation and you can uh, solve it uh, uh, using by some, um, I don't know, Newton method and find this function at least numerically. So this is a very explicit procedure, mm -hmm. but what you will do after that with the equations, with the obtained equations, it's a different question which probably should be addressed to experts in the classical finite dimensional dynamics. Uh, how complicated can be manifolds uh, with uh, finite dimensional? 
Uh, it depends on uh, how complicated this is as uh, a initial system. And uh, what we know uh, is that this manifold is diffeomorphic to RN. So from topological point of view, there is, it's just uh, RN because it's a globally the graph of uh, Lipschitz or smooth function, a smooth bounded function. But uh, the dynamics may be very complicated, but uh, there is no non-trivial topology of this inertial manifolds. They are always uh, diffeomorphic to RN. Thank you. Next question, please. Can I ask the question? Hello? Yeah, welcome. Yes. Okay, hello. Uh, so my question is, uh, I mean, you use here terminology like slave mode and something or slow, yeah, slave mode. You know, I know this terminology from uh, singular perturbations from, from when actually slave mode and, and active mode are determined by uh, different time scales. Uh, so my question here is, uh, how do you determine what is your slave mode and what is your sort of like driving? Uh, it is spectral gap? Yes, it's spectral uh -huh. gap condition. And let me show these equations. So I call mm -hmm. uh, this uh, first n eigen modes as uh, slow modes and second one is fast mode are uh, fast modes and this is related with the fact that uh, here the maximal eigenvalue is lambda n and here the minimal eigenvalue mm -hmm. is lambda n plus one and spectral, no, I mean, yeah, gap, okay. mm -hmm. spectral gap exactly guarantees you that uh, these faster modes are somehow fast the mm -hmm. fast modes is faster okay. than slow modes. And I no, 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 this I understand. But later you said, for example, that, uh, I mean, this spectral gap condition is not really uh, good. So it's actually too restrictive. Uh, so in some yes. sense, you have to first find the spectral gap uh, for particular value L, and only then you, you, you uh, can subdivide your, your system, yes? And then yes. the spectral gap is a little bit elusive. Uh, it's it's satisfied <laughs> if you fix L or if you want to get it for any nonlinearity L, uh, you this you are able to find the corresponding N. Then you need mm -hmm. uh, a sufficiently uh, fast grow of eigenvalues. For instance, mm -hmm. uh, in one dimensional case and Laplacian, they grow like n square. And then you take mm -hmm. n plus one square minus n square, and you get the spectral gap like 2n. And then you, mm -hmm. you have equation n greater than n, basically. And this mm -hmm. can be always satisfied. But in two-dimensional case, you, they already grow like n. And then plus one minus n, you have a constant. And for big L, you cannot do anything. This constant cannot be larger than L. So the spectral gap conditions are already not satisfied in 2D. And it's only worse in higher dimensions. Mm, but in okay. some particular cases, when you have symmetry, for instance, on two-dimensional torus, there are logarithmic gaps. Because then you may have multiplicity and, uh, and ideal situation on, on dimension and dimensional sphere when you have very high multiplicity of eigenvectors, eigenvalues, and spectral gaps are the same as one dimensional case. On the sphere, any dimension. So you may have some extra mechanism. Okay, okay, thanks. You're welcome. Thank you. Uh, and now we are uh, smoothly uh, finishing the talk, but continue the same discussion on the coffee break. 
So you are welcome to ask uh, more questions. And I ask also uh, Professor Zamyshleva to stay here. Maybe there will be some questions uh, for you regarding your talk. Uh, now I'm not going to moderate anything because uh, coffee break is not moderated. Uh, please, you are welcome to ask your questions to Sergey or whatever you wish. <laughs> 